What's up everybody, Durek back at it again with another video. So a lot of you have wanted me to cover other games that relate to law enforcement, and I gotta be honest, that's kind of a hard thing to do in such a niche genre, but I think I was able to find one. SRT or Special Response Team. This is a game that is very early in development, so do not expect anything soon, but I will definitely be covering this project as it progresses. For now, we're just gonna have to settle with an interview that I got with one of the developers. So let's get into it. So tell me about yourself. How many members do you currently have on your team and what's your previous experience? All right. Well, first of all, I'm Brian Watts. I'm the casting director. I'm the lead writer and I guess the voice actor for Special Response Team. I've personally voiced in around 20 plus video games, mostly World War II games, some, well, mix of World War II and horror games, I guess you could say. Currently, there are, I want to say, six plus uh, official members on the development team, uh, plus several freelancers outside. Can I ask what SRT stands for and why that name in particular? It's another terminology for SWAT, basically. Um, uh, SWAT firstly began with QRT back with the FBI. <clears throat> they used to stand for Quick Response Team. Then they changed to... I believe it was SRT for SWAT for a while. I might be wrong about this, so if there's any, you know, don't, don't crucify me if I'm wrong, basically. <laughs> but um, I think QRT eventually transformed into HRT, which is Hostage Rescue Team, uh, which is the FBI's, I guess you could say, um, elite special response unit. Special response team is, they're mostly founded with sheriff's departments. There are some city departments and munici uh, municipalities that actually do have an SRT unit. I know the Department of Homeland Security, I believe it's the Secret Service, it might be something else, actually has their own SRT unit. But SRT is just essentially SWAT. Um, it's just another acronym for SWAT. Is that the reason why you decided to go with SRT for the game name? Well, the reason why is essentially um, I've always had an interest in law enforcement. I'm soon to be a law enforcement officer, hopefully. I have an interview scheduled, but that's just, that's another discussion, basically. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's, it's more or less that we wanted to make a, a, a police game that actually, you know, tells the story of actual police officers or what they go through. And the way we're doing this is kind of interesting is the fact is that we want to get all of our SRT operators uh, to be voiced by actual cops. Oh. So we want to either cops or federal agents or, um, of course, if they're federal agents, they're, their names are going to be kept uh, completely anonymous if they really want that. But, um, yeah, we, we wanted to tell a story, essentially, about our, you know, about a SWAT team. Um, depending on what the financial situation is for the game, if we have enough money, we definitely want to tell the story of a rookie cop who goes from, you know, a field training officer or a field officer, uh, you know, a patrol officer, I guess you could say, to SRT from training experience and what he actually experiences uh, in terms of stress on a job and, uh, you know, things of that nature. Yeah, yeah. I, I was actually going to ask that next question. It's going to be, um, I was going to say, give me the gist of what the game is all about. And my understanding is that it's supposed to be, you know, like a story-driven SWAT game, or can you explain that? Well, <clears throat> it is a lot more story-driven than SWAT 4 ever was. Uh, SWAT 4 was a beautiful game, but SWAT 4 was a really great game, especially when you're a kid. Um, playing that game was just, you know, a really amazing experience. It brought me into the whole limelight of police work, or just what police work actually is. But the game is trying to capitalize more or less on movies such as End of Watch, which I think we could both agree is probably one of the best police movies ever made uh, with Jake Hall and I forget what the other guy's name was. But it's trying to, <clears throat> uh, I guess you could say, memorialize movies like that and then shows like Southland, which to me was one of the best police shows ever made. It actually tells the story of what LAPD goes through and things of, the nat of that nature. Our, our idea was basically to... Uh, um, you know, encompass a story with our game. We we definitely want to have the ability to replay missions, replay callouts, I guess you could say. We definitely wanted to put a more spec ops the line sort of emotional draw on things. Uh, we wanted to make the player feel like an actual police officer and actually feel like they've experienced this, you know, this trauma or this str <clears throat> this stressful situation that most law enforcement will go through. It's it's not all what, what it's made out to be in the movies and in the TV shows, I can tell you because I've ridden with so many cops now that 90% of the police work is just paperwork. I mean, we don't want to put that in the game because that's just going to bore the hell out of every, every, you know, everybody <laughs> who plays the game. Yeah. So <clears throat> we're definitely cutting the corners a little bit, but we still want to bring in, you know, uh, the type of adrenaline rush and 
story-driven elements that define police work. You know, it, it's one of the most interesting jobs on the planet. I mean, it really is. Okay, okay. So you mentioned SWAT 4. Is that your inspiration? SWAT 4 is a very big inspiration, as well as the movies like End of Watch and the TV show Southland, Criminal Minds, uh-huh. um, things of that nature. I would say SWAT 4 and maybe LSPDFR, the mod with GTA 5. Oh, okay. Uh, the mod was, uh, whoever made the mod was did an amazing job at it. It really, really that, like they really did. The first mod I ever played with uh, police was LCPDFR back when GTA 4 was released. But it would be SWAT 4, uh, you know, GTA 5 or GTA 4, and maybe some a few other games. I want to, <clears throat> I would, I would say maybe Door Breachers. Uh, I happen to know the developers of Door Breachers. They're really great guys. They did a really good job delivering a good police game. You know, things of that, of that nature. And I think the community's missing a lot of really great police games. There really is no police game that tells a story right now, and that's what surprises me. Yeah, that, that was actually going to be my next question. Tactical shooters seem to be dwindling. What made you guys decide on a niche SWAT game? Could there be potential? Well, it's not really... We're not really going for the whole arcade situation. I mean, we are, but we aren't. We're going for more of a, like I said before, a story-driven element like Spec Ops The Line. Oh. Spec Ops The Line, for me, the story itself was was phenomenal. I mean, it made you realize that your actions have consequences and I mean, your actions always have reactions, opposite or positive reactions. And that's kind of what we were going for with this whole idea was that we wanted to bring to light some of the things that, you know, it's not all glamour, it's not all fun and games. People can die in, in this type of field. And, you know, when people die, it leaves a scar on that person's life. I mean, I don't care what anybody out there who doesn't like the police say. There's no officer, who, unless they're a sociopath or a psychopath, who enjoys killing people. I mean, no cop wants to pull the trigger and kill somebody. That's just wrong from all standards um but when that when it does happen it's an emotional break in the person's psyche i mean unless the person's seen combat before like in military then you know more than likely even if it has seen combat it's still gonna it's still gonna affect the person i mean it really is we definitely wanted to bring in light that situation where your actions can eventually catch up to you or your stress is gonna build up and you know it may lead to ptsd later okay okay Regarding the solo campaign, how many maps are you aiming to release? Are they going to be dynamic and that you could do a lot of things, or are they just mostly going to be like a linear setting? So I can't reveal too much information right now because it's still extremely early and we're going at the prototype stage currently right now. I can say that we have a lot of really interesting plans. Um, our team wants to have SRT basically, you know, go from things of real SWAT teams go through. I mean, let's be honest, real SWAT teams are going to go inside of a bank every single day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're not going to have bank robbers every single day because that's that's going to have not just S, uh, not just SRT or SWAT. It's just it's going to have everybody. The F- FBI, everyone's going to be there for those type of events. So really, you're going to have events like drug busts or drug raids, things of that nature. That's primarily what uh, SWAT actually does is drug raids, arrest warrants. Um, there's so many things that SWAT actually does. So, so you're trying to go for like a realistic angle is what you're trying to say. Trying to keep it realistic, but also gameplay oriented as well, because you can't make everything realistic. Like I said before, you know, 90 percent of police work is the paperwork and we don't want to bore the hell out of the player with doing that kind of stuff. So. Okay, okay. Is this going to be single player co-op or is it just single player or or PvP at all? So currently right now, um, that's really, really just too early to tell. We definitely want to have multiplayer experiences, but again, it, it would come down to financing or the funding investors, whoever we get to be a publisher. I mean, we're in talks right now with several people, but nothing's been confirmed. I don't want to say anything right now. I'm just going to say that it's it's in the idea. Because I, I know you guys are just like barely starting out, correct? C- right. That's correct. Okay. So yeah, I don't want to put anything down on the record that you're going to be doing a whole lot of things. You know, as you said, it just depends on your, your, your funding. I, I guess the next question I'm going to be asking is, you said that you are, you're going to be the lead, right? Or is that too early to talk about? I'm, I'm already the lead writer. Uh, yeah, I know, but you're also like the lead actor, right? Well, I mean, the main character's name is Brad Taylor. He's around 23 or 20, 22 or 23. I forget which age he was. He uh, He's the lead protagonist, I guess you could say. He worked as a police officer, or he works as a police officer for the, Ridge, for the Ridgeview Police Department, which is our 
local town or not not as in real life but i mean i know it exists somewhere um but this is just a game town he is going to be the guy you play as essentially we wanted to just kind of have an emotional uh, situation where you know you're not just going to feel what he experiences as a cop in terms of you know the shooting and the hostage rescue and all that stuff you may also depending on the funding like i said before you may also experience his life outside of police work such as social life dating life things of that nature of course that's going to be difficult but it's definitely something that we want to look into. Tell me about this buy SRT a coffee. Like, what is that exactly? Oh, yeah. So Ko-Fi is essentially sort of like a GoFundMe or a Patreon. Um, it's just kind of there for if you want to donate for the prototype. That way you can afford to buy, you know, new freelance. We, we can afford to basically purchase freelancer services, if you get my drift. Um, uh -huh. You know, basically hire a freelancer to do something for us, like, um, you know, new weapons, new gear, that nature. Basically, people who donate will be put into a sort of roster or sort of list. Not only will they be credited in the actual, you know, credits themselves, but when the main Kickstarter pops up, they'll already be applicable for the Kickstarter backer rewards for what they donated for the co coffee or Kofi or however you pronounce that crap. Basically, depending on what you donate, we also want to, you know, have people in the game itself. So we can actually have our 3D modeler or 3D character artist actually digitally scan people's faces into the game itself as characters okay sounds very cool um that link will be in the description if anybody wants to donate to that how many guns do you think that you're gonna have in the game like is there gonna be a, a quite quite a big selection there weapon wise uh we definitely want to have a variety of weapons i don't really know a precise number again we just want to have tactical weapons as well as you know weapons for the bad guys i mean the bad guys are, aren't going to come out with crowbars that's a possibility but you know we definitely want to give the bad guys weapons as well maybe like sawed off shotguns or high point uh pistols for, for just an example so i don't know a necessary number i just know that we have things in the works right now and things we added on as well for the hacking plan what are some obstacles do you think you're going to run into during development well i mean obviously you're going to have issues during any type of development even if it's not even uh regarding video games crunch time for example that's always heavy burden on the team financial woes difficulties deaths in the family i mean it's, it's not like a mafia so it's not going to be like one single family but just in general like it's, if say one of our programmers had a death in the family and we lose a programmer or something like that then you know that that leaves us in a bind but being accepting of situations of that of that nature is what it, it's the same thing in law enforcement you have to be accepting of a certain degree and understand that people aren't robots they have lives they have to live and you know we have to be there for each other and that's what it comes down to is that you're going to have situations where things get tough and it's how you persevere through the toughness that defines who you are as a human or as you who are you who you are as a man or woman or whoever okay okay i guess that's kind of like the bullet point uh <laughs> the, the bullet point explanation yeah do you guys have an idea of how the game is going to flow am i going to start up the game and then immediately go into like a cut scene and then the game and then or, and then gameplay and then is it going to come back to like a screen or it's a little too early to say right now we're still working on the demo or the prototype however you want to say it currently we just building our own sort of mini story in the prototype it's going to lead to the main story essentially but um in regards to your question it's just way too early to describe anything like that right now i'd like to but i just can't all right all right you, you mentioned the demo um is that going to come anytime soon so that we can actually take a look at what's going on the prototype would firstly be delivered to uh, possible investors possible publishers um you know people of that nature and then we'd send the next prototype phase i guess you could say to you know content creators uh we definitely want to get a demo out before the fall i don't want to give an ex you know uh, an estimation because i just can't at this point no, that's fine we are working very fast and very hard to get things done we've already got a lot of levels done so far so we're just you know we're working with what we're given essentially okay okay um how far along in development would you say that you are are you, are you still very in the very very early stages or are, are you somewhere maybe like 50 percent or in terms of total development uh i can't really give a percentage of that oh, okay uh gameplay is done uh, several characters have been modeled already several things have been done so far in terms of programming uh the 
vehicles have been modeled, things of that nature. Uh, weapons have been modeled. A few weapons have been modeled. Basically, like I said before, characters have been modeled. I, I don't necessarily know what to say in terms of percentage-wise. Like like I said before, we're trying to shoot for the prototypes uh, before really anything else. So gameplay's primary factor in the prototype as well as you know the custom assets we've actually made and things of that nature. So we're, I don't want to give a percentage, but we're fairly along the road when it comes to the prototype. Okay, okay. Do you know if it's going to be released on Steam, or do you have like another avenue, maybe a website of some sort? We've thought about the whole um, Epic Store, but in terms of like uh, the player of reach, I think we're going to stick with Steam. You know, it, it, that's all fine and dandy with what Metro did. And, you know, I like Metro as the game. Like, you know, I, I forget who the company was who made Metro at this point. <laughs> uh, 4A? Yeah, 4A. <laughs> I like 4A as a company. I just forgot what their actual name was. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think we want to stick to a certain market value or market customer. And that would be people who, let's just face it, uh, most PC gamers are on Steam. Uh, there, there really isn't a big majority on the Epic Store, not yet. I mean, there could be in the future, but right now it's mostly just Steam. Well, I mean, I, I look at it like, just release it on both sides, because at least, you know, you get money from both avenues. Right. Uh, as much as Epic is an inferior platform, they do seem to at least help the developers out. Mm -hmm. At least in terms of, uh, you know, what cut people get. But anyways, so I've seen a lot of those little videos that you're dropping, and they look pretty good. H who's making those? Oh, the cinematics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be our lead designer. Um, his alias is just Smoggy. Uh, that would be the lead designer. He used to be the lead developer. He stepped down and just became the lead designer instead. The lead developer, his name is Arn. He is the guy in charge of everything, essentially. Uh, but yeah, Smoggy, or the lead, whatever you want to call him at this point, we just call him the lead designer, or the, the MVP. <laughs> yeah. He's done a hell of a job so far with uh, everything in regards to just the level design as well as the cinematics. All right, all right. Um, do you have any closing statements that you would like to say about the game? Well, like I said, Special Response Team was made for supporters of law enforcement. I mean, of course, anybody can play it, but we want to make sure that we stand out there as actual supporters of law enforcement, the thin blue line, you know, back the blue, whatever. I don't know exactly what the word is, not code, but whatever certain aspect you want to say. We we're, we support law enforcement, essentially. We support all first responders, EMTs, firefighters, medical personnel, federal agents, and of course, law enforcement. We definitely want to say that we want our SRT operators to be voiced by actual members of law enforcement or the federal government. Not the federal government as in politicians, but like, you know, federal agents of that nature or law, federal law enforcement officers or federal law enforcement or just regular law enforcement. Okay. So far, we've got around two, I think, two law enforcement officers that are voice acting as SRT operators. And I don't want to toot my own horn, but so am I. I mean, I'm going into law enforcement myself. I'm actually working as a public safety officer for a college campus, not as a law enforcement officer, but just in general. But yeah, if you, if you guys know anybody who is currently in law enforcement or works in law enforcement or federal law enforcement or whatever you want to call it, then yeah, um, if they're definitely interested in voice acting, just you know, have them contact us. I guess the only prerequisite really is that you have a good microphone. Because we're obviously not going to take somebody who's using a Turtle Beach headset to voice act a character in a main game like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's just really my closing statement is that this game was made for people who support Law Um It's going to be the game that tells a story as well as, you know, makes you comfortable with that story and particularly the people inside the story as well. As well as, of course, entertaining kind of a crappy way to put it in at the very end but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey man well thanks for coming out i don't get too many developers on here so uh thanks yeah no problem it's been great talking to you man That was one of the developers over at SRT. If you would like to keep tabs on them, check out their YouTube channel. They just uploaded a new dev blog. Go check it out. They also have a Twitter and a Discord. If you would like to donate to the project, that is also in the description for you guys to check out. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.